Hi, my name is Melody Ledrido and I attend Hawaii Pacific University. I'm graduating this winter 2013 with my Bachelor's of Science of Health Sciences. I'll be discussing a health issue that I believe that many athletes can easily develop if not educated well enough. So let's get started. The title of my presentation is called Love Yourself As Much As Your Sport. As you can see here, this is my pre-seed proceed model. It is my outline for my paper and presentation and I'll be working my way right to left to discussing each and every one of these categories in more detail throughout this presentation and you'll begin to understand how these factors influence my target population into developing this health issue. So I know that most of you are familiar with eating disorders but just to refresh your memory I'll go over it. What is an eating disorder? It is a mental illness that affects a person's psychological and physical well-being. According to Bradlin Sunda and Sunga Borg in 2013, it is a serious mental illness with high mortality rates. They are often long-standing and make a negative significant impact to the individual's quality of life. It is estimated 24 million in the in the United States alone are diagnosed with an eating disorder. And there are two eating disorders that stand out, anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa. Anorexia is a physical and emotional illness of a person who fears of becoming fat, which can trigger a person to poor eating habits and dangerous weight loss. Bulimia is a physical and emotional illness of in which people, especially young women, eat a large amount of food when they cause themselves to vomit in order to not gain weight. These two eating disorders have the same concept, which is to control their way of not wanting to become fat. But we will be focusing on anorexia nervosa. Now that we know that our health topic is, looking at these pictures, what do you see in common? They're female and they're college athletes. So you can conclude that my target population is female college athletes. Now you're probably wondering why female college athletes. Well, it's because I was a former college athlete. However, I never played with anyone when I was growing up or noticed anyone who had an eating disorder. I wasn't just observant like that. and I didn't pick up on any of their habits or anything like that. But around my senior year in high school, I noticed that my teammates and I were always judging ourselves, comparing ourselves to star athletes and even to each other, wanting to have rock solid abs or to be fit and slim or to lose body fat and to be more lean it would be type those type of characteristics that we would judge ourselves about and when I graduated from high school and went off to college it made me realize that I needed to take better care of myself because I didn't have my parents telling me what to do anymore and I was on my own and I had my own independence and freedom so it caused more pressure to be responsible because I wasn't just dealing with the typical pressures of social norm anymore I was dealing with learning how to live on my own, budgeting money, academics, performing well in the court, learning how to manage my social life and my personal time. And these are just a few factors that would impact an athlete's nutrition choice. It affects women athletes physically and psychologically. So here's phase one, quality of life. My quality of life goal is to improve female college athletes' balance of nutrition and exercise to help their physical and psychological well-being. As for my target population, their quality of life is to receive the correct nutrition in order to perform at a high level because excessive eating and lack of eating can affect her performance and confidence. The pressure that college students face, a long general sociocultural pressure to, to achieve and maintain a thin lean body, can create an atmosphere in which college women respond with pathogenic eating behaviors. Anyone and everyone is dealing with pressure from social norms. It's inevitable and college athletes are dealing with it twice as much as non-athletes. College athletes must deal with balancing school, traveling, and playing to the best of their ability. The pressures of learning to be able to perform at a high level can cause them stress and anxiety, which triggers them to want to eat more or to exercise more. So here we have phase two. So from the previous slide, I discussed the pressures female college athletes face, balancing academics, games, traveling, practices, and nutrition. All these pressures can take a toll on the athlete physically and psychologically. There are a few factors that contribute to athletes having an eating disorder, like their behavior and environment. Female athletes are a group particularly at risk for developing eating disorders or engaging in unhealthy behaviors to control their weight. 
So here we have these two factors that have a major influence on female college athletes, which are the behavior and environment. Behavior is defined as something that influences a person to act a certain way. Environment is what triggers female college athletes' behavior towards anorexia. So looking at behavioral factors, we have not eating enough, excessive exercise, too busy doing other things such as academics, meeting up with their groups, having to do papers that have a deadline, or catching up on homework. Now, catching up on sleep can be another factor of being too busy of doing other things. They could be really tired and overworked. Now, looking at environmental factors, we have social norms, the expectation of certain size and shape, advertisement and media. So phase three is the predisposing, reinforcing, and enabling factors. Predisposing factors are what affects female college athletes' decisions, which are based upon their beliefs, knowledge, and values. Reinforcement factor is a reward that can either be positive or negative caused by an action. Enabling factors are barriers that those with health issues have encountered desirable behaviors. Under predisposing factors, we have self-esteem, performance, value their appearance, schoolwork demands, and time management. Self-esteem is a major factor that impacts female college athletes because they value their appearance and they value their fear of becoming fat. There have been a few studies that show a correlation between self-esteem and female athletes being dissatisfied about their body. Reinforcing factors, we have positive reinforcement, which would be body transformation like their appearance, self-esteem, confidence, and a stress reliever. A negative reinforcement would be making time to eat and the athlete would feel less accomplished or even fat due to social norms of skinny being beautiful. Women value this perception and they motivate it motivates them to do anything and everything to become thin. And just like predisposing factors, self-esteem is built upon their body transformation. So although her self-esteem is positive, she is physically hurting herself because she's not receiving the right nutrients to fulfill her body needs. And I'll show you that on the next slide. As for enabling factors, I was not able to find hard evidence to support it, to support female athletes having a barrier to developing an eating disorder. So here we have the picture that I was saying that I would show an example of. Physically, her bones are popping out of her skin. She's very skinny and underweight. Now, when she looks at herself in the mirror, she sees this fat girl who is overweight. And this is her messing up with her psychological thinking. As you can see, this messes with her self-esteem. Like I said, self-esteem is a primary factor. And female college athletes see themselves like this. This is how they see themselves. And this is what triggers them to want to exercise more or to want to start themselves. So phase four is basically the interventions and programs. All the information that I gathered from phase one through three have a common, have common themes that are affected by anorexia nervosa, which is physically, their appearance, psychologically, self-esteem, and confidence. I believe that we must address the awareness and educate the whole athlete population, not just only female college athletes. Now you're probably wondering, why the whole entire student athletic population? Well, it's to help prevent the prevalence from increasing. Male athletes are also prone to developing an eating disorder. However, their prevalence is just not as high as female college athletes. So here we have my, my program, which is called the On-Campus Athletic Health Program. This program will focus primarily on education of health and exercise to improve their nutritional, physical, and psychological health. It will target the student athletic population, which includes redshirts and fifth-year seniors. So as you can see here, this class will be offered in the fall and spring semester. Now the way that I broke it down is that I divided the classes into grade levels. So freshmen, sophomore, junior, seniors, and fifth-year seniors. Now if you're participating in a fall or winter sport, you will be taking this class only in the fall semester. And if you're participating in the spring sport, you will take this class in the spring semester. Now here's the part where it gets a little bit tricky. We all know that to become a full-time student, you need 12 credits. Now you would need 12 credits on top this class, which will be 3 credits, will equal 15 credits in order to be eligible to play for your sport. So let's say I'm a volleyball player. My sport falls in uh, my sport season is in the fall. 
So when I began to sign up for classes in the fall semester, I'll need 12 credits that go towards my major and plus this three credit which is the requirement class in order for me to be eligible. That will be 15 credits that I'll be taking this fall. Now, when spring semester comes along and I have to sign up for classes, I will only need to sign up for 12 credits that are going towards my major. Reason being is because my sport is not in season. This class will be offered once a week for three hours for all five classes. So I was thinking Mondays, freshmen, Tuesdays, sophomores, Wednesdays, juniors, Thursdays, seniors, and Fridays, fifth year seniors. So here we have the freshman class level. I budgeted their, uh, I did their budget costs, and for the grading scale, this grading scale is for the whole entire program. It will be based off of a pass or fail class. So 65% will be an in-class final based upon their, their lectures, their videos and their activities in class. 25% will be based off of their food journal, of what they wrote, what they recorded, the type of portions they ate, what they ate, their food intake, and things like that. 10% will be based on attendance. Now for the budget cost for the freshman class, for the class and materials is 3200 per semester. So this includes their poster boards, brown paper bags, prizes like gift cards and group dinner certificates for group activities, class shirts, seminar class, and computer and projector. Here we have the program timeline. I'd like to start working on it in June, in the beginning of June, and then hopefully pilot testing the curriculum throughout the fall semester and then doing a full implementation throughout the spring semester and then comparing and evaluating the program and writing a final report in May so to see which one which semester was more effective I want to hire instructors for this program I want to hire an health, a health educator who will be earning 65,000 a year health psychologist who can range up to 40,000 to 85,000 a year, a nutritionist educator, 34,000 a year, and a health and fitness educator, which is 45,000 a year. The budget cost, the way I did this was I took the materials from the freshman class and I multiplied the quantity by five because of the five classes. So 15 times five for poster boards is 75 times 69 cents, you get 51.75, so on and so forth. For the gift cards, there will be 10 for each class level. So 10 times 5, you get 50. Multiply 50 times 20, you get 1,000. The group dinner prizes will be distributed to each class. There will be only two. So 2 times 5 is 10. 10 times 100 is 1,000. Now the t-shirts, I did a minimum of 30. 30 times 5 is 150 times 1217 equals 180. Uh, 1825 and 50 cents. Now the materials alone for the whole entire total semester for five classes is 4,000. Now the class seminar is five. Five classes, multiply that by 2,400. You get 12,000. So add the seminar class, which is 12,000, plus the materials, which is 4,000, you get 16,000. So 16,000 for five classes for one semester. You multiply 16,000 by two, and you get 32,000 for the whole year, for fall and spring semester. At the end of the semester, student athletes will gain knowledge about how to maintain and or improve their physical, psychological, and nutritional health. So if we were to put forth this on-campus health program for athletes, the rates of eating disorder and other health issues will be reduced. Athletes will be more aware of how to maintain good health throughout co their college career and even beyond that. And it's also beneficial for the sports program to build support system and all sports will be closer together. And it is a great way for all athletes to interact and show team spirit for one another. Because after all, we are 16 teams, one program, one school, and one family.